All right. Well, I don't know if my deer is still around or not. <coughs> Jeez, okay. But I've got a bunch of tomatoes here that unfortunately have gone bad. I waste so much money on food living like this. Um, everything goes bad. Yeah, there we go. Look at that, eh? Isn't that gross? Anyway, we'll put them all down there. They may still be good enough for my deer uh, if she shows up. We'll do that. Huh. There's that gnarly old tree. I like that. Yeah, see that? There are some really amazing trees on this property. Old, old trees. Beautiful old trees. And that's another thing that's kind of neat about winter is the foliage goes and you can see all the gnarly old trees, you know. You can see the, the twisted limbs and everything. This old apple tree here. Um, I actually did a little research and I think that this might be a tree that was made this way on purpose as a trail marker. Because I've seen pictures of trees that were bent, that were forced to grow this way in order to mark trails. Apparently, native, um, native Indians used to do this. The natives, they used to actually... Now, I don't know if they did it up here. I know in the United States there's places where they did it. And if you look at that, the way that's growing, that looks like it was done on purpose. And it's identical to pictures I've seen where the native Indians did that. And so I think this is probably a trail marker. They used to do this every so often along a trail. They'd have a tree like this so that you would know you were still on the right trail. And it would also mark sometimes places where you could stop and rest or get water or whatever, you know. If there was a water source nearby. And I think they bent them differently depending on what significance they had. From what I read, it was something along those lines. So basically, if I'm right, that old apple tree is basically the equivalent of a road sign. You know, that says such and such a town so many miles from here. Or so many miles to such and such a town. Or, you know, food, gas, and hotel, next exit. Or whatever, you know. That's basically what that is. Anyway, I'm boiling my water here still, and yeah, anyway, I'll talk to you later. I was hoping to make some of my spaghetti sauce, but I don't have any good tomatoes, so I won't be able to do that today. <laughs> ah, let's go inside here, eh? There's my good boy. Hi, Rocky. This little fella here is a blessing in my life, you know. I'd be lost without him. I really would be. Yes. You're wonderful, Rocky. It's true, you're wonderful. All right. It's cold outside. It's not too bad in here with the big buddy running there, the big buddy heater. I got one tomato that's halfway as decent, but that's not enough to make sauce. Yeah. All right. Anyway, we'll see you later. I have to think of something else to eat. Oh, this here. Wait a minute. This here is a catnip toy with the lady from... Um, from, from the, the, the other place. There was a lady that I sometimes worked for her and her husband on their property where I was doing all the brush burning and stuff. This is a catnip toy that she made. This thing's all full of catnip. Look at that, eh? This is for Rocky. You want this? Hey, you like that? Hey, you. Boop, boop, boop. Hey, there you go. That's yours. Look behind you. Look behind you, Rocky. He's already high. He doesn't know what he's doing. Come on, this way, this way. Hey, look, 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 look. There you go. You got it. Oh, yeah, look at him, eh? Ha! <laughs> you like that, don't you? No, don't put it in the water. There you go. Don't put it in the water. Let me move the water over so you don't get it in the water, eh? All right, there you go. You want to have... Here, I'll move it away from there, too, though. Look, look. Look, 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 look. <laughs> there you go, my friend. He likes it. He likes that thing. Alrighty. That's Rocky's catnip toy. We'll talk to you later.